welcome to this session of the course fluid machines. Today we are going to solve few problems related to reciprocating pump. So, let us start with problem number 1. So, the problem statement is given as follows. So, single acting reciprocating pump having a cylinder diameter of 150 millimeter and stroke of 300 millimeter is used to raise the water through a height of 20 meter. Its crank rotates at 60 rpm. Find the theoretical power required to run the pump and the theoretical discharge. If actual discharge is 5 liters per second, find the percentage slip. So, this is the schematic of the problem. This is the cylinder and this is the piston. this is cylinder diameter d and this is the stroke length l. Now, let us first note down the important given quantities here. Given quantities are this cylinder diameter d which is 150 millimeter stroke length l 300 millimeter the water is raised through a height of 20 meter so let us denote that by h equals 20 meter crank rotates at a speed of 60 rpm another important thing to note here it is a single acting reciprocating pump so single acting reciprocating pump, which means it discharges only once in one rotation and the actual discharge is given as 50 liters. So, Q A the actual discharge is 5 liters per second. Now, to find the theoretical power required, let us first write the expression of theoretical power. So, theoretical power required P T H is rho Q theoretical G H, where rho is the density of water 10 cube kg per meter cube. Q theoretical is the theoretical discharge or the volume flow rate obtained theoretically. G is the acceleration due to gravity 9.81 meter square per second uh, meter per second square and H is the height through which water is raised. So, H is 20 meter. Now, from this relation we can obtain P theoretical or theoretical power required to operate the pump provided we know the theoretical flow rate. So, let us first the theoretical flow rate. theoretical flow rate q theoretical. Now, in this case the pump discharge the whole volume. So, go back to the schematic. So, let us in a one stroke the this amount of volume will be displaced from the cylinder. So, volume discharged per stroke will be volume of the cylinder times the number of reciprocating motions performed 
in discharge. So, as it is a single acting reciprocating pump, so in this case this will be 1. So, the volume discharge per stroke will be nothing but volume of the cylinder. Now, volume of the cylinder, let us say this is in meter cube. So, volume of the cylinder is cross sectional area of the cylinder pi by 4 d square times the stroke length. So, let us just substitute these quantities from here. So, d is 150 millimeter and l is 300 millimeter. So, pi by 4 in me unit in meter unit we can express this. So, this can be obtained as 0 0.53 0 0.0053 meter cube. So, the theoretically obtained volume discharged per stroke is 0 0.0053 meter cube. Now, as the rotational or the crank rotates at 60 rpm of n equals 60. So, this uh, in this case the reciprocating pump performs 60 strokes per minute or a single stroke per second. So, the volume flow rate. So, theoretical volume flow rate will be volume. So, one thing to note here is that this much of volume is displaced by a single stroke and the reciprocating pump performs 60 strokes per minute or a single stroke per second. So, the volume flow rate will be nothing but this time in meter cube per second. So, 0 0.0053 meter cube per second as n is 60 rpm which is 1 rps and it is a single acting pump. So, we have found one of the required answers which is the theoretical discharge. Now, let us find out the power required. Now, theoretical power required is given by this relation. So, now we just have to substitute all the quantities. So, now we have obtained Q theoretical as 0 0.0053 meter cube per second. So, P theoretical will be rho is 10 cube, Q is 0 0.0053, G is 9.81 and head develop or the in the height in uh, through which the water is raised is given as 20 meter. So, this you can obtain as 1.04 kilowatt. So, theoretical power now we have obtained the next task is to find out the percentage slip. Now, due to slippage some volume is not discharged. So, theoretically found we have the volume that we have is 0 0.0053 meter cube per second. So, due to leakage this much of volume will not be discharged through the reciprocating pump. So, the slip in this case is the difference in theoretical and actual flow rate and we define slip, uh, slip factor by taking the ratio of this difference with the theoretical flow rate and take the percentage of this. So, let us define this slip factor. So, percentage slip is defined as the theoretical flow rate minus actual flow rate over the theoretical flow rate times 100 percent. So, we have obtained the theoretical flow rate as 0 0.0053. Actual flow rate is mentioned in the problem. So, actual flow rate is given as 5 liters per second. Now, in meter cube per second that will be 0 0.005 divided by the theoretical flow rate. 
so this is 5.66 so percentage of slip is point, uh, 5.66 so we have all obtained all the quantities the power required the theoretical discharge and percentage slip now we will move on to our second problem which is also related to reciprocating pump so first let us first read the problem now a reciprocating pump has a suction head of 6 meter and delivery head of 15 meter it has a board of 150 millimeter and stroke of 250 millimeter and piston makes 60 double strokes in a minute calculate the force required to move the piston during suction stroke and during the delivery stroke find also the power required to drive the pump so in this case the suction head hs is 6 meter the delivery head hd is 15 meter the bore is nothing but the diameter of the cylinder is 150 millimeter and the stroke length is 250 millimeter and the piston makes 60 dub, uh, double strokes in a minute so let us note this down 60 double strokes in a minute now we have to find out the force required to move the piston during suction stroke and delivery stroke now the suction pressure head pressure head which is ps by rho g let us denote suction pressure by ps so ps by rho g is the suction head which is given as 6 meter so the suction pressure will be rho g times 6 so density of water 1000 g 9.81 and 6 so this will be so this will come in newton per meter square so this is the pressure now the force now let us find out the force required so we have to find the suction stroke during calculate the force required to move the piston during suction stroke so the force required to move the piston during suction so the force during suction will be nothing but the pressure times the cross sectional area of the cylinder so the pressure we have or suction pressure we have obtained as this so let us just substitute here 10 cube 9.81 times 6 this is the force and the cross sectional area is pi by 4 d square so substitute d here so bore diameter is given as 150 millimeter so 0 0.15 in meter so this you can obtain as 1.04 kilo newton so this is the required force to move the piston during suction now we have to find out the force required to move the piston during the delivery so let us find this out so force required to move the piston during delivery this will be nothing but pressure during the delivery and the cross sectional area so p d times pi by 4 d square this is the expression now let us find out what is the pressure here now similarly in this case also the 
delivery pressure head pressure head pd by rho g is hd which is the delivery head hd is given in the problem as 15 meter so from here we can find pd as rho times g times 15 this in Newton per meter square. So, let us substitute this pressure in this expression to obtain the force. So, force required to move the piston during delivery will be P d pi by 4 d square, P d is 10 cube to 9.81 times 15 pi by 4 and d is 0 0.115 meter. So, this you can obtain as 2.6 kilo Newton. Now, the next next task is to obtain the power required to drive the pump. So, the power required to drive the pump pump P will be rho q g times h, where q is the volume flow rate, volume flow rate, h is the total head, which is the summation of h s and h d. So, h will be, h s is given as 6 meter, h d is 15 meter. So, this is total head. Now, to obtain the power required, we first have to find the volume flow rate q. So, what is q? Now, similar to the previous schematic, let us just draw another time. So, this is the control volume. bore diameter d and stroke length l. So, in this case the volume swept by the piston is this much. So, volume swept by the piston is pi by 4 d square l. So, this much of volume is swept in a single stroke. Now, one important thing to note here is that <laughs> the pump performs 60 double strokes in a minute. So, in a minute it pumps performs 60 times 2. So, 120 strokes in 1 minute. That means, it performs. So, number of let us note down this number of strokes performed in a minute is 2 times 60 because this this is a double acting pump so and 60 double cycle means 2 into 60 times uh, this is the number of strokes performed in a minute so, number of strokes performed in a second will be nothing but 2 times 60 divided by 60. So, this is the number of strokes performed per second. So, the volume flow rate will be nothing, nothing but this volume uh, swept by the piston in a single stroke times this. So, let us substitute all the relevant quantities. this times 2 into 60 by 60. So, pi by 4 d is 0.15 square and L is given as 250 millimeter. So, this meter and 2 into 60 by 60. So, this you can obtain as 0 0.0088 meter cube per second. 
now let us substitute this flow rate in the expression of power so power is rho times q is now 0 0.0088 0 0.0088 times g 9.81 and h is 6 plus 15 so power is 1.81 kilo newton so now we have obtained all uh, all the quantities relevant to this problem with this i am ending today's tutorial class thank you